In this video, we will learn how to use vectors for calculating forces. First of all, we need to know what are scalars and vectors. Many physical quantities in engineering mechanics are measured using either scalars or vectors. A scalar is any positive or negative physical quantity that can be completely specified by its magnitude. Examples, length, mass, and time. Vector is any physical quantity that requires both a magnitude and a direction for its complete description. Examples, force, position, and moment. Vector addition. There are two methods for adding any two vectors, parallelogram and the triangle methods. The goal of each method is to obtain a triangular shape. Let's start with the parallelogram method. If we need to add the two vectors A and B by using the parallelogram method, we can follow the following steps. First, connect the two vectors A and B from their starting points, or tails, as shown in figure A. Second, complete drawing the parallelogram by drawing lines parallel to A and B as shown in figure B. The drawn lines will intersect at point P. Then draw a line from the starting points of vectors A and B to the intersection point P as shown in figure C. This line, which is R here, represents the result of addition of vectors A and B. Finally, select one of the two triangles that form the parallelogram. In this triangle, we can apply the sine and cosine rules as we will see later. In the triangle method, to add the two vectors A and B, we can follow the following steps. First, connect the starting point of any vector to the ending point of the other vector. For example, connect the starting point of vector B to the ending point of vector A as shown in figure B. Then draw a line from the starting point of A to the ending point of B. This line, which is R here, represents the result of addition of vectors A and B. Also, we can connect the ending point of B to the starting point of A to get the same result as shown in figure C. As we can see here, by using the triangle rule, we got the triangular shape where we can apply the sine and cosine rules as we will see later. There is a special case when adding two vectors. If the two vectors A and B are collinear, which means both have the same line of action, the parallelogram law reduces to an algebraic or scalar addition where you simply add A and B algebraically to get R. In statics, there are two common problems. The first one, is finding a resultant force. The second one is finding the components of a force. To find the resultant force, we can use either the parallelogram law or the triangle rule. In this example, we have the two force vectors F1 and F2 as shown in figure A. To get the resultant force FR, we can use the parallelogram law as shown in figure B or use the triangle rule as shown in figure C. To find the components of a force, we can see the following example. In this example, we have the force F, and we need to find the components Fu along the U-axis and Fv along the V-axis. To do that, we can follow the following steps. First, from the ending point, or the head of the force F, 
draw lines parallel to axis U and V to get a parallelogram shape as shown in figure B. Then select one of the two triangles that form the parallelogram as shown in figure C. After getting the triangular shape from the parallelogram or triangle method, we can use the trigonometry rules. In a trigonometry, we have two rules, cosine rule and sine rule. These rules can be applied to any triangle as shown. In statics, the magnitude of the resultant force can be determined using the law of cosine, and its direction is determined from the law of sine. The magnitudes of two force components are determined from the law of sine. 